Hello. Hi. <laughs> I am live here on Facebook with Becca Olson. Becca, where do you work on the Fairbanks campus? Hi, I work in uh, career services. Uh, what does that do? Well, career services is here to help students, staff, and faculty in all aspects of their career or work job lives. So that's from anything from resume or cover letter editing or helping you structure that to mock interviews where we sit down and we practice interview skills um, to job fairs and things like that. Um, so um, for a mock interview, uh, that's that must help like people really allevi alleviate some of that nervousness because there's nothing more, you know, tense than going in and facing a bunch of people who you want to impress. How do you simulate that? So usually we meet in a room that's not my office, so more like a conference room or something like that. Uh, the individual is given the time and and the place, and then they're asked to bring their resume and cover letter with them and dress formally like they would for a interview. And then oh. when they come in, I greet them and treat it just like in a, an interview. Um, I'm going to quick right there. Um, just I know this is not exactly what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be helpful for because you say dress formally, and in Alaska that can have a different meaning yeah. that may mean down in the lower 48. So um, when you say dress formally, uh, do you mean suit and tie? Do you mean like a shirt with a collar? Like I'm obviously informal today and I made that choice uh, to not wear a shirt with a collar. What is dressing formally in the career services world? It's going to depend on the position and the organization that the person's applying for. So for instance, if I am applying let's say for a marketing position at a firm where the normal everyday dress might be business casual, then I'm going to go one above that and I'm going to dress probably full business suit for that interview. If I'm going to interview somewhere where the normal dress is more casual, people are able to wear jeans, then I'm probably going to dress more business casual. So maybe like a nice colored pant and a nice shirt on top. Um, for guys that could be like a polo, more business casual, that's, mm, it could that could be even more casual, but I would always err on the side of dressing up more. So if you think, okay, the normal dress is business casual, I'm going to dress up. I'm going to put a suit coat over it, or I'm going to put a tie. Does that make sense? It's usually it does, depends it on the place. Then, right? So it's always you sort of level up of where the place is. You're going to do a little bit of research, see what they wear there every day, and then dress just a little bit above that. Can you overdress? I would like, say there are times you know, when can overdress. I think I immediately think of like, okay, if you're going to, um, let's say you're going to work in a veterinary office, uh, maybe as a tech, and you come in in a full suit, I feel like that would be a little bit too much. So really thinking about what you would be doing at that place. And what you said about doing research is really, really important. Researching the company, knowing a little bit about them, what they do, what's important to them. And then also kind of looking at that style of dress. And you can always ask other people as well, um, or even call and ask them, or go to the place that you're going to be interviewing at too. So if someone out. get an interview set up and you're talking with your hiring committee member, you could be like, hey, what do you guys usually wear around there? What's, what's a, is that okay to ask those sort of questions? Or, cause that would Are feel you a little- In the interview? Like before the interview, like, hey, we'd like to talk to you. And they're like, what should I wear? Or how do you find that out? I wouldn't necessarily ask the person that calls you for an interview. Um, I can tell you that in the past when I've gotten an interview and I wasn't quite sure what to wear, um, I usually ask someone in that office, but not necessarily the person who's called me. So whether that's the admin or just going into that place and kind of seeing it or looking at their website, the way the company has kind of branded themselves can tell you a lot about it too. But I think usually, you're not going to error if you kind of if you pick those slacks and you wear that button up shirt you're going to be okay the same for if you're doing like an online interview like i if you're if you're talking via skype or anything like that should you just wear like some pajama pants or leggings and then dress up on top or should you go full out i think it depends i think a lot of times your clothes can help your confidence <laughs> and so um, if you feel like you look really professional and confident in the mirror, if that means that in an interview like this, where I'm definitely not wearing pajama pants, but <laughs> or am I? 
um, you wouldn't know, right, in this type of interview, but it, it's really important for a video interview that you check your background. There shouldn't be like dirty clothes on the floor or anything like that, um, because that all speaks about you. Should you put up like a back a green screen and then put like the tropical Ocean. tropical <laughs> island behind yourself back there? Like, yeah. Anyway, this is all this is great stuff, and hopefully, we'll, I, I want to follow up to talk more about this stuff. But the main reason that we're talking today is you've got about a little over two weeks away. Um, is a career readiness workshop. And there's information on your Facebook page and online about this. Um, but this is uh, getting people ready to go to a career fair that's gonna happen later on in the semester. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So you can so thing in February, and I think I have the dates right here. It's February 12th, is that right? Mm -hmm. So you come in there, you're like, hey, how do I get ready for this career fair? What should I prepare? What should I wear? Okay, so one of the things that we're going to do, and I'll tell you a couple things first, is the career fair that we're getting ready for is on February 20th. So then the career readiness fair is on February 12th. So and the actual career fair is the readiness fair. Yes. And one of the reasons we did this is because a lot of times employers will tell me after the fair that they saw some good materials, so things like resumes. Um, or CVs, and then they saw other materials that weren't so good. Um, they saw some materials that were great, but then the person wasn't presented as professionally as they would like them to be. So, so before you go with this stuff, let me ask you, it's a question that I've had to learn years ago. What is a CV and how does it differ from a resume? Okay, so a CV is called a curriculum vitae. Um, and how it differs from a resume kind of depends oh, on how you're using it. Okay. <laughs> Keep on going. Sorry, um, but your so your CV, if you're writing it for academia, is a lot more structured than a resume. It's a lot longer usually than a resume. Put a lot much more information on it. Your education and things that you did in academia, research, presentations, publications, those are the kind of stuff that you put on a CV. But then there's also like a hybrid CV that's kind of a mix between your resume and your CV, and those are often used sometimes for federal positions. Now, not always, but sometimes. Um, they're also sometimes used if you're trying to get like a research internship or something like that, um, sometimes for the medical field as well. It really depends. Unfortunately, there's no like one size fits all CV. <laughs> that would be lovely, but there's not. Um, so the question about that, I'm just I'm typing something here real quick as we talk. Um, is uh, should your resume just be a list of things you've done? Should it be a little creative when you're creating it? Um, like, what should be on it? Should it just be like, here's here's my job, here's what I can do, or should it be like pictures and images and colors, black and white, or color resume? What's sort of the latest thing? That's a great question. I think. It really depends. So once again, I feel like everything in the resume industry is going to depend on who you're writing it to, where, like, where's it going? What type of business is this? Because, and that's really important. So once again, knowing the business, knowing where you're writing it to. If you're going to submit a resume to e-learning, I think it can be a little bit more creative than if you were going to submit it to a different department on the UAF campus. The reason being is that e-learning has a little bit different ways of looking at things that like new innovative things. You have to think about who's reading it. Um, so first I would say no pictures of yourself. But the reason being is that humans are, um, we tend to judge and we use subliminal messaging to judge people all the time and you wanna make it as easy for your hiring person as possible to look at that objectively. So I would take pictures off. Mm. Second is I would really look at your your experiences. So that's everything from volunteer experience to education to work experience, and then take out that job description or that internship description and look at what are the things that they're looking for and what are the things that you've done that are similar to what they're looking for. And then that's the stuff I would include on your resume. So even if it's not like a field that you've worked in before, but you have experience in the stuff that they want from that job, highlight those things on your resume um, versus the CV, which sounds a bit more dry to use to use that. Like it's more 
bullet points on a CV versus a resume that can be a little more fun? Yeah, CV is often more like paragraphs or like short little short descriptions. Oh, okay. um, it really depends. I have seen bullet points on CVs, but those are usually more of that hybrid CV versus like an academic CV. Um, but once again, there's there is always like there's no like this is the rule. Right. As far so as your resume, you'd want to you'd want to highlight those things. So if you haven't worked in that field before, but they they're looking for someone who has communication skills, maybe a background in military science, et cetera, and you have that, then those are the things that you would highlight in your resume. And you can pull those out using bullet points. So for the career readiness fair, to get ready for the career fair on the 20th, um, will you be working with people if they want to create three or four different versions of their resume in case depending on who they're going to uh, apply to? So you could have one that this is for this sort of company, but it's the same. This is my experience for different kind of companies. So you, you'd have a, a folder that has a few choices in there to choose from who you're going to hand them to? Not exactly. What we've done for this fair is that when people sign up for the fair, for our career fair on the 20th, we send the employers a questionnaire. And so we have all of this data about this is who they're hiring for. This is the majors that they're looking for. These are the qualifications that they want. And so that will be live before the career readiness fair. And students will be able to look at that and we can kind of use that as a guide for how to, okay, let's let's tailor this resume to your the positions that you want. The okay. other thing that we can do at the Career Readiness Fair is I, um, I encourage people to have a master resume, so something that has everything on it you've ever done, uh, and edit it, format it to the where you really like it, where there's no mistakes and all of that. And then that way, when you're looking at a position that you want to tailor your resume too. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're just rearranging bullet points. You're changing, maybe you're taking this job out and you're putting you're putting this job and this job in instead and making it fit for that job. So if I'm uh, in my final year of university here at the UAF, I may have had a student job, maybe two student jobs. I may have worked a little bit in high school, but would you recommend putting everything on, like if I had a lemonade stand outside my house when I was growing up, or if I you know, sold some stuff on eBay, does that make me you know, an independent consultant marketer? And you know, when you say put everything on there, what is everything? So for a master resume, I would say everything goes. Like I would I would just put everything on you can think of. Maybe That's your master. But you're not sending your master to people. That's not what we're doing. But I think the reason I say everything is we get stuck a lot of times like I haven't done anything. I don't know how. So being able to just put everything on it, great. Um, my master has stuff I did in high school. Am I going to put that on now? No, but I've been working on it since then, so it's got that information on it. Um when you're sending your resume to people, the key word is relevancy. Relevancy is going to dictate how long or short your resume is. It's going to dictate what you decide to put on it or not. If you're applying for a marketing job, a lemonade stand is probably not going to be that experience that they're looking for. If you really want to mention it, you could mention it maybe in your um when they ask you in the interview about tell me a little bit about yourself, you'd be like, man, I've wanted to be a marketer since I was marketing my own lemonade at, you know, 10 years old. That's great. But that's not something you want to put in that resume. Um, we could talk about all of this all day, but because um, uh, the next the next big question is uh, cover letters. Um, so at the Career Readiness Fair, you're going to help people come up with cover letters as well? So not just me. We'll <laughs> have... Um, you. No, we're partnering with the Writing Center and the Speaking Center, as well as community professionals. So, so far, we have um, two people coming from Foundation Health Partners. We have um, someone coming from Alaska Executive Search. The, uh, let me make sure I'm saying this correctly, um, Air Force Civilian Services is going to be represented, and so is the Air National Guard, and we're hoping for a few more, but they'll be We'll all be there to help with uh, resumes, cover letters, and we'll have practice interviews as well. So it's a great way to sort of get rid of some of the nerves before you go into the actual job fair a week later. You'll have a better idea of what people will be asking you, how you should present yourself, the materials that you can bring. So what a great way to, to get people ready 
to for the next step to find job interviews and get a job out is it I guess this is a more of a general question. How is the job market out there for people who will be graduating this May? Like, is it something you should be excited about? Should be nervous about? Is it, you know, what's the job market like out there? Andrew, I think once again, I think it's going to depend. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> That's going to be my answer for everything. Well, it depends. <laughs> is that I guess so. Let me let me sharpen that question down. Is there a place yeah. that, can, that people should be looking at? Where would you? What's a hot hiring sector that you found in your research? Well, I think, um, I, that... well, so, okay, I'm going to say two things. So the first thing I think of is that when you're graduating, and I don't want to make anybody sad or anything like that, but when you're graduating, so we're a bunch of other people with the same degree that you have. So then your ability to get a position might be dictated by the fact, well, have you had an internship? Have you done any work in college? What is your experience? And so that is definitely going to put some people ahead of other people when it comes to getting a, a job. Um, as far as what are some positions that I've just seen open a lot, um, the first one that came to mind actually is not really like one that you might, you, you may or may not need degrees for these, but Air Force Civilian Services is hiring a ton of people over the next, like they're one of the big ones that keep coming in to me and saying, hey, we're going to have 300, 400 positions possibly, possibly opening up. So that's a big one that I think of. That's not a specific major. Is that is uh, that one, um, the one that you just mentioned because of the new uh, influx of jets and stuff that are be coming to the interior? So they're really mm -hmm. looking to you to staff some of those. That's a well, That's a great tip right there. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, um, but yeah, that's as far as I will, I'll project right now. We'll just say that. No, I think that's great because um, you're, one of the things I understand what your job is, is you want to help the students, staff, and faculty prepare themselves to make their own choices. Like they're doing that research. They're finding a place that they want to get a job. They're finding a thing that they want to get involved with. And they can come to you, Becca Olson, at UAF Career Services. And they have this idea in mind. And you can help them shape their resumes and cover letters uh, to going to the place that they want to go. Yes. <laughs> that's perfect i feel like that should be a bow yeah, like da -da -da. Um, okay, so the next and you've got stuff that's going on all semester long really encourage people to go uh, uh follow your facebook page because you post there you post job opportunities and listings not just stuff on campus but off of campus all in, around in the community and stuff like that all the time it's great to see the stuff that you post um the next big thing you have coming up is on the 12th of february what day of the week is that it's a tuesday oh so it's like Today's a Tuesday. <laughs> so Tuesday, February 12th at the Wood Center Ballroom. Um, and do they have to bring anything to that or you just can come there and you can learn some stuff right from there? If they can go ahead and prepare or bring something about themselves, whether it's their resume and their cover letter or it's them brainstorming a resume, um, if they want to do a mock interview, I would encourage you to dress up. Uh, you don't have to wear the full suit, but just think about, okay, we're going to maybe tuck in our shirts or wear a button up. Um, feel, you're going to be meeting with possibly some of the employers that are coming to help out with the fair. And this is a really great opportunity because a lot of people come to me for resume editing, that kind of thing. But a lot of people don't come to me for the mock interviews because it's scary. It's something that's really scary. We don't like interviews. And mm -hmm. so being able to sit down with somebody who is there to help you learn and give you feedback on how to improve that process is huge. Um, and the other thing that, because you're getting ready for this and you've got a big stuff going on over the next month or half, a month and a half or so, people can regularly book sessions with you um, in your office, uh, but there's going to be a window of opportunity when they're going to have to book around that. They have to wait till later in March to sort of get stuff ready to go. Yes. But they so, can, they, can they email you? Can they just go to your the website and the Facebook page to, to find you to set up those sessions? So if they go to our website, which is uaf-career or uaf.edu-career, um, there's a big button. And we're in the middle of redoing our website, but there's a big button and it says make an appointment. So they can click that and they can see all the appointments slots that I have available. Uh, I am one person. So starting February 7th 
and going until March, I think it's, it ends like March 1st. So March 4th, I'll be available again, but we will be taking appointments because of that. But we do have some resume renovations, which happen every other Thursday. They start January 31st and those are drop-ins. So you don't have to make an appointment. You can just come in and work on your resume. Um, and then we've also, um, I trained the writing center TAs as well for resume editing so that's another really great resource for people in the greening building that eight floor uh writing on the eighth floor. So yeah they can, oh great so it's not just my uh, english paper they can help me get a job as an english teacher yeah so while we don't have <laughs> english you don't have to be an english teacher with an english degree but um <laughs> so while we have uh no appointments here we've just been partnering with them to make sure that people still have that resource um Another thing, Andrew, I forgot to mention when you asked us what we did is oh, that good. we um, we provide career exploration. I think a lot of people come into college and they choose a major or they haven't chosen a major for various reasons. And then they realize, well, I don't want to do this or I don't know what I want to do or I've done this for 10 years and now I'm coming back to school and uh, I don't know. And so. Um, that's something I sit down with individuals and we do a variety of things, but really just try to look at options for that person and kind of help them explore and figure out what they want to do and what makes them happy and um, that kind of thing. And I think that's a really important thing that gets overlooked sometimes. We get into college and we get out and we don't always realize if we enjoy what we're going to do at the end. So. It's hard to tell. And then one of the hardest things about doing an interview and not getting a job or putting in a resume and not getting an interview is what did I do wrong? What did they not see that they wanted? How was I, what was I lacking that they wanted to see? It's getting a job is tough and scary. And it's so great that you're out there to help students here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and faculty and staff members um undergo what can be really really emotionally and intellectually stressful stressful time and stuff like the readiness fair and then the job fair itself is such a great service to provide for the campus so uh thank you becca thanks <laughs> um, okay so go to your facebook page go to your website book an appointment um any uh what what one tip would you give for someone who's about to graduate uh, in May? One, just one. Oh, that's so hard. Oh, no, like, I know that's uh, why I wanted to save it for last. I would say don't wait. Don't postpone planning for your future till you graduate. Start now. Great. I think that's, I would have ended the broadcast right there, but I wanted to sign off for that. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk again um, as the semester goes on, give some people some tips and stuff like that, where maybe places they could shop, if they go to the free store, all things like that. Great, great information. Thank you so much for taking some time, Becca. And thank you for doing this. So see you February 12th for the Career Readiness Fair, and then February 20th for the Job Fair, where you put the stuff that you get at the Career Readiness Fair into action to take that next step in your professional life.